We've already established that in order to make sound clinical decisions, we need solid evidence from clinical research. But as this evidence is sometimes lacking, we may need to set up our own study to gather more evidence. There are a number of ways that we can do this. Epidemiologists have a wide variety of designs and techniques at their disposal for the collection and analysis of scientific data. But before we start thinking about how to conduct our new study, we need to carefully decide exactly what it is that we aim to investigate. The first stage of any epidemiological study is to derive the question or questions that you aim to answer. The research question you choose should be based directly on a clinical problem that you believe could be solved, and at least in part with more evidence. It's of the utmost importance that you identify what kind of clinical problem you wish to address, as this will have a huge impact on the design choices for your study. To help with this process, clinical research can be classified into four branches using the depth model. The depth model is a model that represents the subsequent challenges doctors face in their day-to-day -day practice. First, we have the diagnostic challenge that can be met by performing diagnostic research. A major problem in medical practice is the accurate identification of a patient's disease status based on a combination of presented signs and symptoms and additional test results. Diagnostic research aims to provide evidence to improve the diagnostic process and daily practice, providing tools such as decision rules to help yield the most accurate diagnosis. Next, we have the etiologic challenge. Etiology, which is the study of the origins and causes of disease, is an intrinsic part of medicine and plays a vital role in understanding human health. In clinical practice, etiology isn't always an issue. When, for example, an acute appendicitis is diagnosed, the etiology is of no concern and the clinician skips this phase going directly to the next step in the depth model, prognostication. While information about the causes of a disease isn't always directly useful in clinical decision making, it plays a vital role in disease prevention and may be the starting point for the development of new intervention. Following this etiologic phase, we have the prognostic challenge. Estimating a patient's prognosis or the cause of the disease over time, also termed prognostication, is important from both the perspectives of the patient and their clinician. After hearing the diagnosis, patients are naturally interested in how their health will change over time. For example, patients who have had a myocardial infarction will be interested in whether they are likely to have a second myocardial infarction. From the clinician's perspective, information about the prognosis of a patient is essential as it's used to make decisions about treatments or preventative interventions. Prognostic research will help clinicians to accurately assess a patient's prognosis, essentially by answering the question, what's the patient's prognosis if no therapy is initiated? The final challenge is the therapeutic challenge. Will therapy improve my patient's prognosis? Therapeutic research studies the effects of treatment or other intervention on the cause of a disease. In order for clinicians to have confidence in the therapies they prescribe, there must be firm evidence that the therapy has a positive impact on the patient's prognosis and that the benefits of the therapy outweigh any side effects. Let's think back to our 70-year-old COPD patient from earlier. What kind of clinical problem are we faced with? While the symptoms are indicative of a patient with worsening COPD, especially given his history of COPD exacerbations, we cannot immediately rule out heart failure as an alternative diagnosis. Our main problem is that when COPD patients enter the clinic showing signs that indicate a chance that they also have heart failure, we need a way to best determine whether they have that disease given that there are a variety of available tests with varying costs and levels of invasiveness. In this case, it's quite clear that our research question will fall into the category of diagnostic research. 
Now that we've established the kind of research we are interested in conducting, it's time to begin phrasing our research question. A relevant question could be, how can we use patient information and test results to determine whether or not a COPD patient with increasing shortness of breath also has heart failure? More formally, this could be phrased as, which set of diagnostic determinants most accurately predicts whether a patient with COPD with increasing shortness of breath also has heart failure? Where the term diagnostic determinants refers to different pieces of patient information, including their history and test results. We can think of ways to clarify our research question even further, and we will discuss this shortly. It's essential to understand at which stage of the depth model your research question lies, as this will determine the kind of study design that would best address your question. As your research aims differ, so should the methods that you use to conduct your research. And therefore, the approach you take to study a problem from one branch of the depth model should be tailored to that specific branch.